Prison was a real epiphany. Now I am well. I need you to find someone. Help me find this monster before she destroys someone else's life. How would you describe Tell Me Your Secrets to a friend? <laughs> you know, like there's a lot going on. What's the quickest way to get there? The quickest way to get there is um, it's a thriller about uh, uh, people trying to figure out who they really are and and what they will do when they are grieving. Mary and John are both deeply flawed individuals, though they're flawed in different ways. Like Mary, we kind of see how she got there. You know, we can see a parent's grief can like drive you over the edge. But how do you think John became such a such an awful person? Yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of room for backstory. And I actually uh, tried not to know as much backstory as I possibly could. I tried to be as much in the moment with the character as we were as we were shooting it. And then, um, you know, as he sort of loses control during the course of the series, that was sort of also Hamish reading new pages being like, oh, I did what? Oh dear. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I mean, he, he's really trying to make the, the next best move that he can and the next positive move away from his history. Um, uh, but in his particular case, history has its claws too deeply embedded in his being. It makes you wonder kind of when you get to the end, like if if at the beginning, Mary had just said, yeah, come work, come help us out. You know what I mean? Like how his life could have gone differently. It's yeah, he would have been, he would have been getting her coffee, the dry cleaning, <laughs> no problems. I thought John was a little bit in love with Mary actually, or I don't know, maybe I was just hoping. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, is, it is really, but I love that, uh, that question, Mara, because it's to the title, right? If like, if we had done it above board, it would have been sanctioned, right? But this whole thing at the end of the pilot of like, it's on the down low, like what that does to people, what that would do to somebody like John, like, don't tell anybody we're doing this. I mean, it immediately pathologizes this, this thing. Um, so, you know, she's doing it because she can't have it be found out that she's like in relationship with this creep. There are points in the show when as a viewer, I just wanted to yell, Mary, do the right thing. Like, Jesus, did you ever want to do the same thing reading the script, Amy? Yeah, I wish she hadn't killed that old lady. Where is that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was like, really? But then I got in her skin. And I mean, again, it's I, I love what Hamish has been saying. Don't tell him that I'm giving him a compliment because, he, you know, he gets a little swelled head. But um, I do, I honestly think all the characters are doing the best they can and doing the very next best they can. So I think that was her best idea at that point, um, given what the old lady was doing and given that I wanted to, to, to have Emma come. Um, no, I love I, I love Mary. I, I I loved her from the get go. You know who I'm quoting when I say do, do the next next right thing. Uh, that's Anna from Frozen Two. Uh, <laughs> in Frozen Two, she is determined to do the next right thing, and uh, but she didn't know that that was going to be like our subliminal theme music. Right. It's a wonderful number. Yeah. You can uh, <laughs> Spotify it right now. Imagine that's what you listen to to like get to get psyched up for your characters. <laughs> I found you. 